Hello everyone, and today we will be solving this problem, which we will find its radius of the convergence, or the intervals, and the power series for this problem. Okay, let's start off by solving the power series of ln1 plus x. Okay, that is equal to f0 plus f oops, f prime 0 times x over 1 plus f prime prime 0 times x squared over 2, and then a plus dot dot dot. Okay, so this is how it goes. And we will find the value of f0 and then f prime 0 and then f prime prime 0. It is supposed to look like this. Okay, so when x is 0, what's the f0? That's just 0, okay? So we know that this is equal to 0, which is just going to cancel out. And f prime 0, okay? So it is asking when x is equal to 1, what is, what is the slope, okay? That looks to be 1, but we can't just say that just because it looks like it. That's why I will differentiate ln1 plus x which then I get 1 over 1 plus x, and then when I put in the 0 for the x value, I get 1. So this is equal to 1, which means this can just be gone because there's going to be a invisible times 1 anyway. And now let's find the value of f prime prime 0. Okay, that is to determine whether this is a concave up or down, but that's just a, a little tricky. So I will just differentiate this equation now since we already differentiated this, so we got this, and now if we differentiate this, we get f prime prime, okay? So f prime prime of x is equal to negative one over one plus x squared, okay? And then when I put in the zero, so now we have f prime prime zero is equal to negative one, okay? So now this is equal to negative one. Great, and now, I think you guys do not need this sections of my work now, so I will delete it. Okay, now let's write, rewrite our equations, okay? So we have ln of n, I mean 1 plus x, okay, is equal to 1 times x over 1, okay? But I will just write it as x and then a minus x squared over 2. Nice, and then there is a plus dot dot dot, but already we can see a pattern. Okay, so the next term is going to be x cubed over 3. And then the next term before this, I mean after that, is going to be negative x to the power of 4 over 4. And then a plus dot dot dot, and yes, it goes on forever. Okay, so from here now, what can we do? Well, our first question we asked is to find a power series for this, okay? That's why if I substitute, substitute negative 2x for the x value, um, so x is equal to negative 2x, it's hard to think about, it's like a metaphor, okay? So x is equal to negative 2x. It goes in there, okay? So now what negative 2x is going to do is just put them into this, 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 okay? So I'll show you guys a demonstration on how to do that, okay? So we have negative 2x because negative 2x goes onto there. And then a negative, negative 2x squared over 2 plus negative 2 cubed over 3 minus negative 2x to the power of 4 over 4, and then a plus dot dot dot. All right, everything looks fine. Okay, and now from here, I can do some more simplifications. Okay, so ln 1 minus 2x is equal to negative 2 times x minus 2 to the power of 2, I mean, what? Yeah, 2 to the power of 2, times x to the power of 2 over 2 minus 2 to the power of 3 times x to the power of 3 over 3 
minus 2 to the, wait, I don't need the parentheses. Um, now, 2 to the power of 4 times x to the, x to the power of 4 over 4. And then a, okay, it's not plus dot 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 anymore. Because what do you see? Every term, it's a negative, 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 negative. So, our next term will start with a negative, okay? So, dot 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 negative. All right. So this is what we have got going on here, okay? So we did find the, our answer of the power series, but another thing we have to find is the radius of the convergence. Okay, radius of the convergence. We first need to find a pattern from here, okay? Well, let's just set as n, of, n is starting from one to infinity, okay? And what I can do is put the negative one on the front, but one is not going to be there. I can put negative, and once I do that, all the negative is going to turn to a positive. So let's rewrite it somewhere. Where's my eraser? Oh, okay, so I think I can remove, um, I don't know, like this one. Yes, I'm not going to use this. So I'm going to remove this one. So, so now the negatives aren't there anymore, okay? So we have 2 times x plus 2 to the power of 2 times t squared over 2 plus 2 to the power of 3 times x to the power of 3 over 3 plus 2 to the power of 4 times x to the power of 4 over 4. And now it's plus dot dot dot. It's plus, not negative. That's great. Okay, so now from here, what can we pull out, okay? We can see, okay, um, there's a negative 1 divided by 1. And every term has the number 2 in it, so let's put that 2 and then a n. And then we have all x's, so let's put x to the power of n and then a over n. Okay, so let's check to see if this is right, okay? We will put as n is equal to 1, 2, 3. Okay, if I put n is equal to 1, then 2, then 3, and then if they are all matching, I got the answer right, okay? So let's use this space right here. So when n is equal to 1, put it in there, I get 2 times x over 1. And then a plus n is equal to 2, put it in there, I get 2 to the power of 2 times x to the power of 2 over 2. And then a plus 2 to the power of 3 times x to the power of 3 over 3. And then a plus dot dot dot. So do this match with this? It is, okay. So we know that those match, which means this is correct. Oops, also um, what we just got there, of course there's gonna be times negative, yeah. Okay, so now from here, how can we find the radius of the convergence, okay? Now that we got to this point. Well, we can use Okay, so now I will put the negative in here because that's going to be important. Why? Because I will use the root test, okay? Root test is the absolute value of our original equation, a, n, and there's an absolute value, and then it is to the power of 1 over n, okay? So, let's put an absolute value of negative 2 to the power of n times x to the power of n all over by n and then to the power of 1 over n, okay? So now what happens is we only have 2 because n times 1 over n is just equal to 1, so we have 2 and then a times x over n to the power of 1 over n. And the negative, of course, disappears from the absolute value sign. Okay, well, from my some videos is ago, that I proved y n to the power of 1 over n is equal to 1. Just go check it out, and I can't do it in this video because the video is going to be too long, so we will just say that n to the power of negative, I mean 1 over n is equal to 1. So we are only left it with absolute value of 2 times x. And whenever you get a number, it is always smaller than 1, okay? But from that absolute value sign, I mean, actually, no, before I 
mention that, I will divide two on each side, okay? So when I do, I get absolute value of x is smaller than one over two. Okay, the absolute value sign, okay? X can be the value of smaller than one over two, but also the negative one over two, because that will be one over two, close to that. So, so this will turn into a negative one over two is bigger, I mean smaller than x, but x is smaller than negative one over two. Okay, that, that's not a good spot to end the answer, so let's delete this part. All right, so this is what we got, but we are not done there yet. Because we need to see if they converge on negative one over two or one over two. How do we do that? Well, we can just put the x is equal to one over two onto the thing that we just erased. Okay, that's perfect. So what do we have? I think we had n is equal to one through infinity of two to the power of n times x to the power of n over n. Okay, yeah, that's what we did. So now x is equal to one over two, put it in there, okay? So when x is one over two, okay, that's not enough room. Let's remove this part now. I'm sorry guys with the erasings, but I promise you that I will get a bigger board, bigger whiteboard. Okay, now x is equal to one over two. Okay, let's put it in there. So x is equal to one over two and then put it in there, which then we would get two to the power of n times one over two to the power of n, oops, n over n. Nice, and then there's a negative. So two to the power of n times one over two to the power of n is equal to just one to the power of n and then over n, okay? The top is always going to be one, so we can just put one over n, and we know that one over n is a diverge. Since it's a diverge, there is no equal equality sign, okay, for one over two, oops. Yeah, so this will just stay like this, okay? And now we have to check for negative one over two, okay? So when x is equal to negative one over two, we have two, the power of n times negative one over two times n over n. Okay, and then this is equal to, so two to the power of n times negative one over two to the power of n is equal to negative one to the power of n over n, okay? And now, this is an alternating series test, okay? So what alternating series test does, okay? So from here, it actually diverges once again, okay? Hear me, hear me why, okay? It's because, yeah, there's a negative one to the power of n over n, okay? But there is a times negative here, so if it goes, so if the negative sign goes up here like this now, the top will always be one, no negative one, just for once, okay? Wait, actually, what the heck am I talking about? Yeah, that doesn't work. I thought I was a genius. Okay, so so I will use the alternating series test, okay? So now when I use the alternating series test, you, you just get a converge, okay? I can't do it in this video because it's already been too long already. Okay, so use the alternating series test for yourself. Then when you get an answer, it'll be converge, okay? So from right here, there is a equality sign for negative one over two. So this is the answer we found. Thank you guys so much for watching my video and see you guys next time.